So you're an active player right now. Yeah. And uh, what year is this for you right now? I'm going into year seven. Year seven. Yeah. What are, what are you hearing in the locker room? Uh, you know, are the players, are more active players discussing this in the locker room? Guys are becoming more knowledgeable about the actual medicinal purposes of it. And so, you know, it's uh, something that I've got a lot of support from, um, just talking to my teammates about it. So I think guys are ready um, just to explore it and educate themselves more and um, just really take control of, uh, of their health, be proactive about it. What are you seeing when you look at the retired player field, the landscape of what it is you have to look forward to? Mm -hmm. um, does it alarm you? I've, I've talked to numerous former players and they almost classify retirement and everything that comes with it as a death. It's that dramatic of a, of a shift for them. And then when you add in the, the trauma from playing the game on your body, it's a perfect storm. So you hear all these horror stories. Um, I, had, I had a guy on my team who was actually an active player commit suicide. Mm. Did you hear all these stories? Mm -hmm. And it causes you to have some concern. You know, sure. it's like, the only thing I'm asking for is research. Yeah. That's the first step to, to any, any type of change. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So what do you want? What is this? So I got uh, yeah. Gabba Pen. Gabba Pen. Le Lexapro or Tizanidine. Percocet. Spikes. Uh, Oxycodone. They, they prescribe me lithium. Knowing you're on all of those, they've prescribed all of those more. Yeah. They just keep. I know. And now they want to put, put me on. Uh, the, the uh, uh, Depakote. Yeah, because of do the because of the thoughts. Because <laughs> yeah. I can't control my mind. Yeah. I won't be taking any of these pills. <laughs> I know, I know, injury is in my future playing this game, and I won't be taking any pills to do. It. So. You got light sensitivity. Yeah. Okay. That's why I was yeah. wearing yeah. constant. Yeah. Like there's not a time when my head doesn't hurt. Yeah. It just varies in degree. Yes. Yeah. I've never stuttered in my life. Right. Ever. And I started take, taking all kinds of pills and all this other stuff. And now I I I, I, stu I stutter. You know, and the worst the worst part about it the overwhelming thoughts. Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah. Right. I get it. You think about suicide, you think about homicide. You think about killing other people. Yeah, you think about everything all the time. Yeah. Back in January, I tried to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I didn't, I mean, yeah, going through crap, but, you know, coming up through football, you always go through shit. You always mm -hmm. have, you know, a way out, or you always figure a way out. Right. And I still didn't want to be here. And right. I didn't know why. And I kept trying to ask myself why and figure out why. And, and do all this other stuff. And, and even now, it's, I still wake up every morning, mm -hmm. regret opening my eyes. I think there's so many athletes out there that are desperate for a better choice at medicine to deal with the inherencies in sport injury. You know, these active players are gonna take that conversation to the next level. That's the tipping point. That's what, that's what pushes the needle. Heather, for some reason. Nice to meet you. That one's my guy. That's Tyler. This is Drew. Hey, Tyler. Oh. Hi, buddy. You know what? <laughs> I know you're saying hi, man. That's right. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that you guys had a chance to see, you know, what we do here because I'm, I'm really not aware of another organization that's that's doing, you know, what we're doing. We we have a really basic mission. We help families that are using cannabinoid therapy. We're conducting research. We're educating families and physicians. Um, we're improving lives. Drew's been on pharmaceuticals since he was diagnosed with epilepsy four years ago. Um, Wednesday was his last day. I just get all choked up. <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday was his last day of pharmaceuticals. Awesome. Uh, he, I bite my tongue. I knock on wood. He's been seizure free now for a month and a half. Oh, wow. Awesome. And, uh, he's doing 
so great. I, I really, it's, it's, it's amazing. Charlotte's Web currently is produced by the Stanley Brothers as um, a therapeutic hemp strain. And it's particularly high in CBD, cannabidiol, which is the non-psychoactive component of the plant. Uh, so it's not psychoactive. This was the goal, really. You know, when I sit down to think about things and what it is I want to do and accomplish, the realm of caring and their great work is uh, priceless to this uh, and, and will be, uh, you know, in the history books as, as the group that pushed this through. <laughs> yeah, just... Well, now we're going. Where's your shoes? You don't need them. I know that this is a discussion at the dinner table in America. Is that Mike? I know that my relatives that have kids in football, my friends, my buddies, ex-teammates that think, you know what, what are we going to do? We're going to lock all our kids up? Is this your tryout for the big leagues? You know, don't let them ride skateboards no more. Don't let them ride their bikes anymore. Don't let them, you know, do anything anymore. How are we going to combat this dilemma? There it is. When you say cannabis is going to save football, you're saying something quite controversial. But the arguments that are around not implementing cannabis are completely surrounded by ignorance. Whoa! Look at that. If you understand cannabis and the different strains and what they do, we can get to answers that will resolve pain and injury and illness like nothing else. This is bigger than me, and so I will continue to allow it to unfold so that I can be there for my family as long as possible.